Hey guys, hope you're doing well. My name is Rowan Tyne and I'd love to be talking to you in person, but I'm in Bali right now. So I am making this video and I've been asked to share with you my story of how uh, the blend of world language and travel has impacted me. So the first seed was really planted in eighth grade. And in eighth grade, I went with part of my family to Senegal for three weeks and it just opened my eyes in so many ways and the biggest thing I saw was that everybody there, all these kids that were playing with me, I'd run around playing soccer and, and tag and just jumping around and getting to know all these kids from these communities and they were so much happier than anyone that I knew, anybody that I had known from back home and they had nothing nothing externally, they were in rags for clothes, they didn't have shoes, but they had community. And that seed was really planted in me then, and that was when I was first exposed to a different way of life. It's, it's changed my life, just watching how that seed has grown. So I went back from that travel experience, and I, I went to school where I'm from in Peterborough, New Hampshire, and in high school I took all the French programs that were offered, and my French class actually really became a family to me. It was a place where we could all let our guard down and just have a good time. And our classroom itself had its own culture. There was this big football player and an academic girl and this edgy girl and a soccer girl and an artistic girl. There were a lot of girls. And then there was me. And I didn't really know who I was. So in high school, I freestyle skied, I played soccer. I cared a lot about my self-image and being cool and all these things that apparently matter so much when you're in high school, but then when you're out of high school, it has no meaning and it means nothing in the outside world. I had a lot of challenges throughout middle school and high school. I struggled really deeply with depression, which created a lot of problems in my life, um, my school life, my family life, and, um, and intimate relationships. When I look back, I knew it at the time, but I kind of avoided it, but my life was really just falling apart. And in, in the fall of my junior year, things really started to shift for me. I used to not care about anybody, and I started realizing that I actually did. I did care about my five younger siblings, I did care about my family and my friends, and I didn't want to keep hurting the people I was around. I knew if I died then, all I would have done with my life was to be in pain and spread my pain to others. And I thought about my death, and I realized that when I die, I want to have left this world a better place. So slowly I started to take this mask off. I stopped hanging with the kids that were mostly friends with me just to be cool and party. And I realized that I had been searching for my happiness externally, in drugs and girls and being cool. And I pretended to be better than other people, but really it was because I was really insecure about myself. I realized that I couldn't keep going on life hating myself and I needed to find some way to love myself even a little bit. And so I started making a lot of shifts. I started eating more of a plant-based diet. I started reading books that taught me really powerful life messages, meditating, I spent more time in nature, smiling more, and just being kinder to people. And this felt, um, I, I would have thought this was weird in the past, but this felt really, really good. And it felt amazing. And so my life started changing in a lot of ways. And I realized that I was just different than other people and instead of trying to fit in and mold myself into being somebody that I wasn't, I needed to accept myself. No one could accept me until I accepted myself. Nobody could truly love me until I loved myself. And I became really fascinated with psychology and philosophy and ceramics and I was never religious but I started discovering spirituality and building more fun, meaningful connection with myself my life and just the world around me. And around this time was when I realized that I needed to travel when I graduated. I had always known it deep down ever since I, um, ever since I was in Senegal that I wanted to go experience the world and challenge myself. And I had started working as soon as I got my license at 16. I started working getting paid $7.50 at a grocery store and a year later I started dishwashing at this restaurant getting paid $9 an hour. And after a while, I got a job in the front of the house at the same restaurant, and I started making really good money for my age. And I had a lot of checks and a lot of cash from tips, and it all went into my bank account, and I was saving up. And when I graduated, 
On that very day, I, I got home and I bought my first plane ticket, a one-way flight to Bangalore, India alone, and I would leave September 5th. I believe that the biggest, most important transformation in our lives is when we go from being children to being men and women. And that summer, I watched my childhood die. I could feel it. Every senior watching this video will understand what I mean. There's this anticipation and excitement of how bad you want to leave and go out into the world and create your life. And then there's also this overwhelm feeling like, whoa, my life is never gonna be the same. I'm leaving behind everything I know. And I believe that life begins outside of our comfort zones. I believe that our deepest desires are often our greatest fears. And I want you to know this, you can live any life you want. And if you wanna feel alive, Go out and discover what your potential is. Challenge yourself, and you might find that all of your previous limitations are only in your mind. They don't exist in reality, and we've just been making them up this whole entire time. They don't exist. And we just have to learn how to shift our belief systems. So on September 5th, I left. And after I hugged my family goodbye, I knew the hardest part of the trip was already behind me. So just to give you guys a few bullet points um, of what the next nine and a half months of my life looked like. I was 18, solo traveling across India with a one-way ticket. I did a 10-day Tibetan Buddhist meditation retreat. I was standing next to the Dalai Lama on my 19th birthday. I was paragliding all over the Himalayas. Um, I've been wa I was watching bodies cremating into the heavens in Varanasi, India. I was trekking over this pass, 18,000 feet in Nepal with views of Mount Everest. I stayed with beautiful Sherpa families in huts in these mountains. I adventured through karst mountains, these limestone amazing things in China. I learned how to motorbike um, in northern Vietnam. I ended up buying a motorbike and traveling 2,000 kilometers to southern Cambodia. I swam off islands at night with bioluminescent plankton in southern Cambodia. I learned how to scuba dive, I got licensed in Thailand, and dove 60 feet below with barracuda and sea turtles. I have ascended volcanoes in Sumatra and lived with indigenous tribes three days out into the jungle on this remote island in Indonesia. I've been um, here in Bali, which is where I found Bali f for the first time. I've been hitchhiking, camping, hiking, and driving all across New Zealand. I've slept with uh, wild boars on mountains in Hawaii. I spent a night on this incredible hike called Stairway to Heaven. I've hitchhiked through Nicaragua during and through roadblocks during riots and protesting that was happening last year. And um, I've been in Costa Rica with my best friend and other amazing people, just being Pirates of the Caribbean. So that was nine and a half months of my life and it was absolutely incredible. Some of the highest peaks and some of the hardest times as well and I want to just talk about what that travel really was for me because a lot of people think yeah like there were all these external things but really the journey happened within me and I learned and gained so much from that experience more than words will ever be able to describe because I held it with intention and I used travel as a tool for transformation. And I could hear these words from the beginning of like 2017, which was my senior year, to when I graduated and then moving through, beginning of my travel, in, in throughout my travels, I could hear these words, become who you were born to be. And this travel wasn't a vacation for me. It was not easy sometimes. I had so many, there were so many times where I doubted myself, where I didn't believe that I could do something, where I felt lost or confused and so much was coming up internally, or I was realizing I have, I w for so long I was, I had all this external freedom where I could go wherever I wanted, but I was not internally free because my mind was not letting me enjoy myself. I was having these thoughts that just made me feel, put me in bad moods. Anybody can go party on a beach and go have short-term pleasure for a couple months, but there is a path less traveled. And if you dare to choose this journey, you will never forget the adventures that you find yourself in. And I held this intention of a rite of passage. And in every ancient culture, culture 
our ancestors had rite of passages that marked the transition of when a boy becomes a man and when a girl becomes a woman. And we don't have these clearly defined points in our culture, which is a big reason that there are so many men and women still acting like children in the world. And, and we've become so high tech in the modern world, but we've become so disconnected with our roots, with who we really are, with our truth, which is that we are organisms of this planet and we're part of this greater whole that is humanity. And our ancestors knew this, they were connected to this, and there's wisdom from our past that we can still use today, which is why I held it like a rite of passage and why I'm passionate about, uh, about this concept, idea, and experience. So I held my travels with this intention. And, and from this intention, I've learned more from my travels than school could ever teach me. And I'm not knocking school because it gives us an incredible foundation that we're blessed to have and not all, much of the world actually has that. But there's, but it's there to prepare us to go out into the world. And what we really need is to go out into the world. And I, travel, I traveled with that deep intention to grow and connect with who I really am and let my heart lead me to discover my purpose in life, to live with courage and to be who I was born to be and to be in that discovery and adventure and journey. So there is a gift within you. And if you start asking life to show you that gift and start listening, you will find the answer. But you might have to quiet the chatter of your own mind to hear that deeper voice speaking to you but it is speaking to you. And your happiness, your dreams, and an incredible life is awaiting you there. Since then, I've come back home to visit my family and friends, I've worked more, I've learned how to solo skydive, and I've left again to come back to Bali. And I had a hard time coming home, and that was, you know, its own story as well. But I've, a mentorship has been a big part of my life. I started working online for this podcast called The Rising Man which is all about redefining what it means to be a man in the world. And since December, I've been back in Bali with my best friend Theo, and I've been doing a lot of videography, connecting with epic people that are living out here, working online, and focusing on my inner journey. So that's a little bit of my story, and if you um, have any questions, feel free to reach out to me via Instagram or Facebook at Rowan Tyne. And I really just hope that this video is able to plant seeds in your own mind that will help you out in your life. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Um, we'll talk soon. Much love.